as you guys know that I'm on this mission trip and I've been really, really encouraged by the work that this church that I'm down here with is doing. They're going out into the neighborhoods and making a huge difference in the community. And it reminds me of this verse in Philippians. It's chapter two, verse four. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And a lady at one of the bigger churches out of this uh, organization, mind you, the biggest church of this whole Seacoast uh, church has 7,000 members, I think, or plus. And uh, it's a big $7 million church. So a lot of these people are disconnected to what's going on out in the, the more urban communities, right? Uh, as most of America is, a lot of people don't have a heart or a compassion to help anyone out in the inner city. And one of these ladies that uh, is a big, you know, higher up in the church said that she didn't have a heart for it either. When her husband said, hey, we're going to go over here and we're going to start doing something about this. She was like, no, you can do that. I'm going to stay over here. And obviously that's not how it works, you know. Um, so she started going over there and seeing what was going on in the neighborhood. And now she has this heart and uh, this gut punch, this reality check that there's so much going on over there. And she's just, you know, ignoring it, choosing to live in her own bubble, choosing to uh, let someone else deal with it. And here we have this woman that's, you know, of status. Uh, and now she's got this heart for the community. And I feel like that's the typical story. A lot of people are like, oh, you know, let, let someone else deal with them or that's those type of people. But you guys got to understand, man, we're all people. And the Bible says that we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so for me to go out here to a whole nother community in a whole nother state and to see the compassion that the, some, of this, some of these people from this church have for them and the way that they do things gives me hope that when we go back to our city, our city's got nowhere near the problem that this city has. This is a much bigger city, 150,000, 180,000 something people uh, in just the city of Charleston alone. Nonetheless, talking about this, the suburbs and the other outskirt communities as well. Um, but still, we can take some of these things back here and implement them into our community. And you can do the same in yours. You know, if you if you see people on the street, you don't have to give them cash. I give them cash because, you know, it's much quicker. I don't have to carry around food with me. Uh, I usually don't have time to go out every single day and just minister to people like I'm doing right now because that's what this mission trip is for. So, yeah, I can do it every day right now. But when I get back home, I'm going to have to find a strategic way to do this to be able to help as many people as possible so that they can see Jesus. Sometimes people don't, one guy didn't even know the gospel. He had never heard the gospel. How do you live in America and you don't know who Jesus is? Even if you don't follow him, you know the name. That's, that just really blew me away. So there are people that will only see Jesus in you. So even if you go out here and you live the greatest life ever, uh, you make a difference for your family. But if you never show anyone Jesus, you know, by, by the way you act, by the way you live, by the way you talk to people, uh, the compassion you show for the world, then I think you really do yourself a disservice. You know, you can be a great person. You can definitely be a great person. But we're supposed to be walking imitations of Christ. And Jesus didn't even have a place to lay his head at, you know. So, I mean, he could have. Don't get me wrong. There's tons of people that knew who Jesus was. That would have been like, hey, you know, you can stay with me. But they packed around tents and they, you know, <clears throat> they kind of moved around like nomads. And in that aspect, I think that there's some people out here that have way too much money and are not really trying to bless anybody with it. There's nothing wrong with being rich. There's nothing wrong with having money, wealth, status, having nice cars, nice things like that. There's nothing wrong with that. But I think that that shouldn't be everyone's sole focus. That shouldn't be your only goal in life is to just accumulate all this wealth that does nothing for the kingdom. Um, if you get a little bit of money, man, donate some of that stuff. You know, we have the 10 percent, which we're supposed to tithe. Um, and I had a guy yesterday that I was talking to at one of these outreach clinics or something like that. And he was like, uh, what am I supposed to tithe for? It's going straight to the preacher. And I was like, I understand what you're thinking. But the, even the preacher, is that's his job. I said, do you go and work for somebody for free? I said, if I had you come over and fix a, a fence at my house or something, are you going to not want to, are you going to want to do it for free? Are you going to want to get paid? And he's like, yeah, I'm going to want to get paid. And I'm like, well, that's the same thing with the preacher. 
everyone's got a job. Not all the money that we donate to the church goes directly to the preacher. It goes towards missions. It goes towards paying salaries for the other staff members, not just the, the pastor. It goes for building expenses. It goes for, you know, anything that your church does or plays a part in. My church gives out scholarships. We do so much with my church. There's a whole pamphlet, like not even a pamphlet. It's like a gigantic booklet that you can get that tells you where all of our money goes to. And if your church isn't that transparent with their funds, then you might you might have an issue. If your pastor's got like six Cadillacs, but you know you live in a small or you, you go to a really small church, you might you might have an issue on your hands. But that's neither here nor there, guys. What I'm saying is just have a heart, have compassion on the community. This is your community, whether you live there or not. It affects you. You know, um, if it surrounds your town that you live in, it affects you. When you turn on the news, you guys all watch the same news. When you go to the grocery stores, you guys all eat the same food. You know, skin doesn't mean anything. Um, at the end of the day, live like Jesus did. Jesus was deity. Jesus was God. He stripped, being equal with God, he stripped away all his power, came to earth to live as a man, walk in the flesh, be beaten, tattered, ripped. His skin was torn open. He was stabbed, you know, with, with a spear through his, through his lungs or through his side, you know, and he did that for me, he did that for you, he did that for black, brown, Asian, he did it for everyone, guys. Have compassion, be the light in the darkness, be the change in the world that you want to see. Let each one of you look not only to his own interest, but the interest of others. It might not be in your interest to go out here and buy some food for someone that's living on the street, it might not be in your interest to do that. It might not be in your interest to go out and tell people that are using drugs that, hey, Jesus loves you. You know, you can't continue to do this. Jesus wants to change you. You know, that might not be the easiest thing to do. It's definitely not going to be something that you're eager to do, if, especially if you've never done drugs or you can't relate. You got to stop turning your nose up at people like that, though. Because the problem is Christian folks are some of the most judgmental folks ever. And so if, if you're far removed from that, you're going to think you're going to look down on them. whether you mean to or not. Your pride is going to get in the way and you're going to think you're better than them. Don't tell me you're not. I, I know it happens. Even I've done it before because I've been so far removed from my drug use that I, I'm like, oh, man, I don't see why they can't get off drugs. Why can't you just stop? Why can't you just stop? But I remember how hard of a time I had when I tried to stop multiple times. So therefore, I'm no better than these people. And neither are you. I really just encourage you guys uh, to let the Bible talk to you. Let it soften your heart. Um, have compassion for your neighbor. You don't got to go do this every day. We do it once a month in my church. Uh, try it once. If you go to a church that does outreach or does some type of street ministry, try it once. It's not for everybody, but at least you could see what's going on. You can have conversations with some of these people and find out why they're stuck in the rut that they're stuck in. It's not just black people, guys. It's white people. It's Hispanic people. It's everybody. Everybody's going through this struggle. You'll be surprised. The lady that runs the facility we were at yesterday said, I think that the community in whole thinks it's just black people and, and Hispanic people, but there's more white people that come here than anyone. Reality check. It's not just us. So that's going to do it for this one. I pray that you guys heard this message with the heart that I have behind it. That's going to do it for this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then. God bless.